What's going on guys? I'm Foreign Color, also known as Venom. I'm a two-time World Cup trick shot champion, but also an APA league operator for Las Vegas. Today we're gonna talk about how to get you from a skill level 5 to a 6. Let's get right into it. Brian K wrote us the following. Work on your kicks and banks. Make sure you do your best to not give your opponent ball in hand after a safety. Uh, I definitely agree to that. Granted, there's a lot more that's gonna come into play to, for you to go from a five to a six than just banking kicks, but it is definitely something we need to cover because in my opinion, a lot of those players, they sort of have an understanding of how it works, but they don't have the full detail. So let's really look into how to kick and banks. The first off, let's define what a kick and what a bank is. So a kick is when you shoot the cue ball, one rail, and then it's gonna go and make an object ball. A bank is when you shoot the cue ball into an object ball, and then it's gonna make it in the, in the pocket. So now that we've defined the terms, how does this work? So I like the mirror image system. Granted, there's many, many more systems. I've done a lot of tutorials in that in the past. We've done a bunch of them uh, with pool docs. So if you wanna look in my YouTube channel, you have much more in-depth tutorials as far as kicking and banking. And uh, you guys are more than welcome to go and expand your horizon on it. So uh, the mirror image system, pretty much the easiest one to explain. Uh, it's very instinctive. Basically, if we're to divide the distance that we have here, so this distance equal this distance, pretty much, if we put a cue straight up, it gives us the point for us to hit. It also, if I grab an extra two cues, here we go, the angle that the cue ball enter is going to be the equal opposite of the angle the cue ball exit, right? This is the theory. Now, we're gonna demonstrate that. Basically, we can also look on this side of the table. So here we have a one diamond distance. This is another diamond distance. Imagine there's a diamond here. Imagine just the wood keep going. Here's your diamond. So now we have two diamonds. So the easy part is I simply have to divide two, uh, two diamonds divided by two, and it gives us one here. So we're just gonna aim the first diamond there. And as you can see, it is spot on. So obviously, this is pretty simple. It's a very easy angle. I'm gonna move out there. Now we got not two, but like one, two, three diamonds. So three diamonds. My half is one and a half, so there we go. As you can see, it's spot on. And obviously we can keep going. So I'm gonna go just one more here uh, to show you that it still works. Now, the only difference is the further out you go on the table, the firmer a little bit you gotta hit it because naturally the ball will just sort of you know, go wide. Now, keep in mind also table plays a difference, but we're gonna approach that in the second point there. Right, so there we go. So we have one diamond, so one diamond distance. Two diamond, again, if you remember, the pocket counts as a diamond here. So one, two, three, four, five, and six, okay? So six divided by two is three. One, two, three. Here we go, this is my three. So again, I'm gonna hit this a little firmer than I've been doing there before, but it should work pretty much dead on. There we go, so this is uh, pretty simple as far as kicking, and that works on the other side of the table. That works a little bit everywhere. Remember, it's just the entrance angle is the equal opposite of the exit angle. Now, banking is pretty much the same. So if I were to set up a ball here, for example, right, this angle that I'm gonna get started with is gonna be the angle I'm gonna get at the exit. So again, here, pretty simple. Right, so you can't miss it. Now, the wider the angle becomes, the more it becomes sort of a problem, right? So you gotta make sure you kinda see it. This one should be right on as well. There we go. So now that you know that it works both for kicking and banking, it's all nice and easy because the two balls are on the same line. What if this cue ball, for example, is up here? Or what if this ball is up there, right? So let's start with the five ball being there, for example. All right, so the, this one, it takes a little getting used to it, but uh, once you understand the concept, it works pretty well as well. So by now you know that you need a horizontal line 
and then divide the angle to make it easy. So let's say we had this line, right? Okay. So this is my horizontal line. It's got to be pretty close to actually good. Then you pretty much have to go backward a little bit, and you got to find the projection of your cue ball into this line. Now, if the angle is small, projection is going to be very narrow. It's going to be very easy. Now, the more the angle is out, the more the angle is big, the more complicated it's going to be for you to find a projection. So in this case here, we have that. I'm going to grab those two cues again because I think this is really going to help us to see it. So if I take one angle and I'm going to guess approximately here, right? I'm going to go for one and a half just because I think it could be close. So if I go there, right? Okay, so this will be my angle. My cue ball is not on that cue line that's projecting there, right? So I don't have the right angle. So I'm going to go with less angle. Here, let's go here. Ah, look at this. In this case, my cue ball is... Well, I'm going to move it a little bit here, but it's right under that Q line. So if I took the cue ball at the intersection here, that would have worked. So my cue ball being here, it's projected in front into the horizontal line. And here we go. So we have our point as far as the kicking go. All right? So I didn't touch it. Living there. I know where my point is. I'm going to move those two cues out of the way. And here we go. We're just going to hit it. Now keep in mind, this also works with the reverse thing. So let's say now this time we had our two ball here and our cue ball there. Well, it's exactly the same concept, but this time we project the cue ball towards the bottom of the table rather than the top of the table. Again, works just as well for bank. And uh, this is pretty much the theory of the mirror system for kicking and banking. Now that you know how to kick and bank, at least the theory, let's talk about how it works in practice because there's a big difference between what's on paper and what's actually on the pool table. Um, a lot of the time, banking and kicking, you're going to have to adjust to what the table gives you, right? So if a table plays short or a table plays long. One of the ways I like to know if a table plays long or short, I'm simply going to go for the normal three rails. And I'm going to hit actually not this diamond, but this diamond with top and left here, right? Okay, and you can see this table is playing actually perfect. Now, a lot of tables, in order for you to make that cue ball three rail into the corner, you have to hit it right there, which is the second diamond, which actually makes the table play short. But this table is pretty good. It plays pretty normal. So we don't really have to adjust anything out of it. However, whether temperature, if it rains or if it doesn't rain, will affect the way the table kicks or banks. So usually, the more the table is humid, the more it's going to play short. The more it's dry, the more it's going to play long. So it'll be very different for you to play, let's say, right here where we're in Missouri, when it's a little bit wet, contrary to Las Vegas when it's 100% dry. So when you're going to play in Vegas in a big championship, the table might bank way longer than actually it does if you're playing in the Midwest. So that's just consideration to know, right? So bottom line is, how do we adjust that? Well, so if we go here, and we're going to start you know, with a decent bank like this, actually. Let's go exactly here so we know this is our aiming point, right? So as now, we're going to shoot again as a, as a guideline here. If I shoot this one, standard speed, I'm going to make it. I know there's not a big deal, right? So keep in mind, this is because I know the speed I have, and this is my standard speed, this works. Now, if a table, you know, plays short, for example, you're going to have to hit a little softer. So what, if I shot this one softer, watch what's going to happen. You can see how much he plays longer. He opens up the angle, right? Now, if I play the exact same point, but harder, you see, I made it, but it went short. So less speed, longer. Harder, shorter, okay? Now with that in mind, we can adjust to everything, right? As well as this, for example. Now, we calculated earlier by trying to project it. Now, you also know that if I shoot this point here, it should come here. But if I shoot a little softer, then it's going to go wide, and I'm probably going to hit it, right? 
So again, if I go to the same spot, but I'm going to hit soft, you can see I'm dead on, right? Easy peasy. So that's also how you adjust the table and how you adjust your kick and banks. Uh, you know, that, that works as well. So the next part of this is English. So English affects the cubo a lot. Uh, it affects your banking and your kicking a ton. So we're going to do the same thing. Respot that same exact shot. We know it works perfect when we hit the second diamond. That because the table plays perfect right now. If I were to play a little bit of right, so one tip, uh, sorry, one tip of left here. I'm going to play one tip of left. Again, you can see it plays long. If I play two tips or maximum left here, it plays even longer. And of course, now if I do the reverse thing and I played one tip of right. You can see it's going to shorten already. And if I played maximum, maximum right, now I'm short by a lot. So whenever you hit your kicks and your banks, make sure you know what English you're putting, what force you're putting, because everything is going to affect the outcome, uh, especially on kicks. Banks are a little, little easier to adjust, I would say, because they're more unnatural. And because you're shooting into a ball, you don't have as much spin transfer. But it does transfer. Remember when we're looking about, in, we're talking about in the first lesson, if you put left spin on this ball, this ball is going to get right spin. So be careful when you do so. So if you're trying to bank but you have to put a lot of left spin, just know that this ball is going to change trajectory a little bit and it won't be the perfect spot that you have in mind. So this is pretty much how to adjust and how to modify the natural line, the natural pass of the cue ball you have for kicks or for even bank shots. Obviously, there are a lot more that goes into play for you to go from a skill level 5 to a skill level 6. We covered the banks and the kicks because this was one element that was important, but there is so much more to it. So, kind of random thought here from picking out the comments again. Safeties are extremely important as a skill level 5. 100% true because, you know, you can't you simply can't run out every table, you can't run out every layout as a five, so if this is a complicated shot, you got to play the right safety, play the right time, and uh, you know, it's really part of the game. Pick the right ball category. I, I see this one so often, you know, people, you know, they make a ball, whatever it is, maybe they make one of each, and then they just kind of go with the, less, the least balls on the table, whatever. That's not the way you go, you know. Uh, let's say you make one of each in APA, one stripes, one solid, that's fine. You, you have the option, so you got to look at the rest of the table. What is the easiest layout? What has the least problem? What has the least cluster? And which one is the easiest to run out with my skill set? Same thing, especially if you make more balls. Let's say you made you know, two solids, one stripe. A lot of people are simply going to go for the solid because you know, there's less balls on the table. But it really is not that simple. you got to look at the entire layout because sometimes a ball sitting there is going to be a lot easier than having, you know, you know, two less balls, but they're all, you know, in, in a mess. Try to control your cue ball as much as possible. It's very important, you know, don't, don't let your cue ball just go and, and get lost in the middle of the table. You know, it's part of the game is to control your cue ball, keep it in a tight spot. When it's under control, you're going to have a lot better chance to run out and in that really increase to the next skill level. Practice, of course, try to practice as much as possible. But also as a five, you also need to learn how to play in a tournament setting and uh, play the right shot under pressure. So slightly different, you know, you need to practice, you need to be able to make as many balls as possible, but you also need to know where are my limits. I'm in a tournament, I'm stressed out, my hands are all shaky. Maybe I should pick the easy shot rather than the hard one. Uh, insurance ball, of course, very important. You're trying to get onto the eight ball. Make sure you have a couple balls around it to get position for it because if you don't and you have just a crazy up and down table shot, it's going to be tricky. And I think finally for me is play percentage, right? So if you cannot run out, just don't. Just again, it comes back to the very first point, play the safe. So play the odds. Pool is a, is a statistic game. We're looking at you, you know, how many percentage, what's my percentage to make this ball versus missing it? Is he higher than 50%? You know, is he worth it? Now, if it's not a high percentage, maybe I should just play safety, try to leave a tough shot for my opponent. And I think all those points together is what really going to bring you to the next level from a five to a six, because as a five, your skill set is there, you're pretty sharp at the pool table already, 
but mainly it will be a decision that makes you go to a six. So all that together, this is what's gonna happen for you and this is what's gonna be needed for you to bring you to the next level. To conclude this lesson, we got another drill for you and because the theme was bank and kicks, I figured I'll give you guys a little bank drill here. It's pretty simple, but uh, it doesn't hurt to do it from time to time and it kind of helps your game for banking. So the setup, I got the one ball here crossing at the diamond and the diamond, then the two ball, I set it up two, one diamond. Again, remember, if you don't want to do it again and again and again, when you're going to have to redo the drill, just put a little chalk mark there so it's easy to see, and then that's pretty easily erasable. The three, I got it one and the one out here, and then the four in the one by two zone. So really, uh, pretty simple drills for the rest. You're gonna simply try to bank every ball. So we're gonna bank the one, one rail here, ball in hand to start. Then we're gonna take the ball, ball in hand back, ball in hand again behind, the sec behind that uh, middle line here, bank the two, then we're gonna bank the three in this one and the four again in the long way. So short bank, long bank, short bank, long bank. There we go. That's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching, and thanks again for giving us all those comments. Now, obviously, there's a lot more that goes from going to five to six. It's not an easy one, it's very difficult. A lot of people get stuck at their skill level five for a long time, but if I gotta take one word out of it, it's consistency. So get consistent, try your best, and it's gonna work.